Hi everyone and welcome back to our Melee AI tutorial series. Previously we've set up some basic AI to follow us, circle around us and attack us after a certain amount of time. Um, and what we're going to do today, or starting today, is look at how we make it work when we've got multiple enemies in our scenario and directing the action so that they're not all attacking you at the same time, they're sort of taking in turns and it makes it a bit more fairer to gameplay. So the way... What well, well, one way this is accomplished is using a master director actor which keeps an track of the situation for the battle and it's that director which determines which enemy should attack next and when as well as determine when the fight is actually over so this director first of all needs to keep track of how many which enemies are in the battle and then it has to score each of these enemies based on certain criteria a grade and when it tells one of them to attack, it will choose the one with the highest points. And that grade will then uh, grade points will then transfer over to the AI to attack. So let's go ahead and get this started. Um, we need to make the AI director here. So I'm going to make a new actor. And we'll call this one a new actor there. And we'll call this one um, Fight Director. And open it up. So the first thing this fight director needs to be able to do is keep track of all the enemies that are associated to this battle. And so we need to go to variables, make a new variable here, and we'll call this one enemy list. And the type for this is going to match the type of enemy you got. So our enemy is called melee enemy. So this will also be melee enemy. Once you've done that, we'll make this an array. By doing that, you click on the little icon to the side of this and change it to an array. Then tick Instance Editable and click Compile. So to show you how you set this up is you have, let's say, multiple enemies here. So let's drag another one out. And we'll drag our enemy, uh, sorry, our fight director out. And I'll make it a bit clearer, like so. And this fight director, you'll see in the details panel, has a default enemy list. So click on add twice. And then with each one, we click with the little eyedropper all the enemies that are involved in this battle. And if you're spawning enemies dynamically, you just spawn them in and you'll have to add them to this enemy array list by guessing the fight director that's in the scene. Okay, so once you've got that, um, this fight director needs to keep track of these enemies because if we push play now... Both of these enemies are going to do basically the same thing and attack us at the same time, roughly. Okay, which is not what we want. We want them to take turns and be smart about which ones are going to be attacking when. So, um, what we're going to be doing is scoring them. So, the way this works is there's loads of criteria you can do. And you can add criteria and take away criteria based on your own game and what you require for it. Um, but one of the key criteria you're going to have are going to be uh, time since the last attack, their position, and um, their how long they've been waiting. Okay, so for this we are going to make a map here. So variable, and we we'll call this one enemy grading. And this is going to be a map. So to go to variable type, and from the drop down change this to the bottom one, which is a map. And this map will have a float as its value. So the melee enemy is going to be the key and the float is going to be the value. So each enemy will have a value associated to it. Hit compile. On the event graph for your fight director, we are going to do a begin play event and we're going to set these enemies up to have a randomized grading value. So let's grab our enemy list, get, and from here we'll do a for each loop. And for each one, we're going to give the enemy grading here, this map, a random value. So here we're going to do uh, find, or sorry, we do add, sorry, add, add the array element, plug into loop body, and this float here is going to be random. So do a random float in range, and we'll choose between one and five. Okay, and that's it. So all the enemies inside the battle get a random value. 
and what we're going to do is we're going to tell this thing to also keep track of those enemy values for debug purposes by painting a widget above their head. So this is how it keeps us a bit easier for us to keep track of what's going on in regards to who should be attacking us while we're developing this. So let's work on our debug for this. So I'm going to create a new widget and this widget is going to be the debug melee AI and open it up and in here we can get rid of the canvas panel and just put a border in and the border we're going to have it see through in the background so let's change brush color alpha to zero and let's just put some text in here and this debug text is going to be the enemy instance ID underscore text so that'd be the the name of the ID, the enemy that we've got here, and that'd be variable. So it is variable box, and then we're going to do another text field underneath that. Uh, sorry, this would be a vertical box first of all. So wrap that with a vertical box. So we're going to have a text field inside that vertical box, and this one is going to be a grade. Uh, we'll do actually we'll do um, fighting grade, so we know exactly what we're talking about and make that underscore text so we know it's a text field and tick is variable and i'm just going to put some padding above that so we've got some spacing uh, a bit more than that would we'll be 40. a uh, bit of spacing between each one okay um and let's change the color of this so it stands out a bit so i'm going to change the color here we'll make it green um, and we'll make the text for the title of it be purple compile okay we're done here we're going to close this we are then going to go into uh sorry not close it we need to add some variables to it my apologies so go to graph and we need to add two variables which are associated to these two things so new variable and it'll be enemy instance and that'll be the enemy ai uh, no merely enemy sorry then we need to make another another variable, sorry, and that'd be the fighting grade, and that'd be a float. So on the tick, or sorry, on construct, because we're going to do the name once. So on construct, we'll do the name, and on tick, we'll do the fighting grade. So on construct, we'll get the enemy instance uh, ID text set text. And you want this one, the brackets. And the in text is going to be the enemy instance get. And then you can just plug it straight in. Oh, no, you can't plug it straight in. Sorry. Get display name. Then you plug that one straight in. It'll convert it for you. Okay, so I'll get the name. Next on the tick, we're going to upgrade, update the fighting grade text. So grab that out, which is get set text and plug that in and the text is going to come from this fighting grade float we'll get that out get and this is going to be um we're going to get this and uh we'll plug this straight into in text and it'll convert it okay so it's just a debug thing so we can see what it's going to be doing so what I want to do is have this appear above each enemy's head and attach it to them. So on begin play, once we've added it to our map here, we're going to go out here, create widget, and choose our debug melee AI. Ah, because it one thing I missed out is we want it to show those two links here. So I'm going to go into uh, the widget. And go to the graph, and just turn these little eyeballs on. And for each one, go down to expose and spawn, expose and spawn. Compile, save, go back to your fight director. So these now should show up. If they don't, just right click and take to refresh the node, and these will now show up. So the enemy instance and the, and the grade are going to come from our map here. So let's drag this along, grab our map. And the instance is going to come from the right element, which we drag into there. And here we'll do a find. 
and we'll plug in a reroot node here so we can plug in to the find as well and then plug the fighting grade into it hit compile so that's going to create the widget we now want to attach this widget to the uh, instance we've got going on here so from this again we're going to drag this out and we're going to um, add widget component and we're going to drag from its return value and set widget like so and the widget there is going to come from this return value for the create debug ii widget plug that in there um, we need to add a transform to this because if we compile um, this will just appear directly on top of its root which we don't want we want to appear above but actually we'll leave it there for now you can see roughly where it is for yourself um, okay so let's let's play this and see how this works uh, and we should see the text there you go okay so the immediate ai has got 2.108 and this one's got 4.682 so i want the one with the highest number to attack and the one with the lowest number not to attack so how do we go about doing this well on our behavior tree we've currently got our um, attack sequence here we don't want this to trigger on the timer we want it to trigger because the fighting director has told it to so we need to change its ai state when we want it to now at the moment the ai state is being controlled by our uh, ai controller and that's done by this timer here for four seconds on this test so rather than use this timer i'm just going to disconnect that and we're going to basically copy this stuff here and we're going to place this into our fight director and our fight director here is going to actually no we don't have to do it we'll, we'll keep it there sorry we'll get rid of the timer and we'll just change the name of the test event here and we'll turn this thing to um ai attack compile and then go to your uh, fight director and let's say um, we'll do uh, what would be the best way of doing this we'll do a we'll do a timer event here so on completed ooh, set timer by event and do event down here custom event and we'll do this one trigger attack the time we'll put in is four uh, seconds and set to loop and the trigger attack thing is then going to call the enemy AI's AI attack so we want to get the enemy grading but I don't want to do it to one that's the highest obviously so here enemy grading we're going to do this get values oh, no, not get values just type in values I think it is yep get values and with the values we want to find out which one's the highest one and with that we want to call the enemy grading that has the highest one so the easiest way of doing this would be make another function so we're going to make a new function here and we'll do this one called um, find um, highest grade and in find highest grade we'll drag the enemy grading out type in keys and for that one we'll do a for each loop on the for each loop we are going to find their value and store which one's the highest as a local variable so array element here we're going to drag into enemy grading with the find node this gets us our grade and we can start with a local variable called um, lock highest value and that be just a float singular and we are going to check this against this value so i'm going to get my lock highest value out which is get and we're going to check if this find value is greater than this lock highest value and by default lock highest value is zero so the first one will always be greater than without going to a branch and be plugged into loop body 
If that is true, lock highest value is going to be changed, set to there. So we stored the local the local highest value, but we also need to store which one had the highest local value. So from this array element, drag this right out and promote to local variable. And we'll do lock um, highest rated AI. Once you've done that, we're going to go down to completed. And on the completed, we'll do a return node. And we're going to drag our two locks here into that return node. So lock highest value and lock highest grade. And that's it. So we now know which one has got the highest grade. So go to the event graph and rather than do the values thing here, we'll drag in that function, which does it for us. So with the lock highest grade here, we'll drag this out and get its AI controller and cast that to its enemy AI controller. And then we can call this AI attack. Okay. So now that one should be the only one that attacks us. Um, but once it attacks us, we want to reset and change its grading value. So with this one here, we're going to drag the enemy grading map out, which is get. And then from there, we'll do um, add. Now, when you do an add for a map, if this key already exists, it overrides it with a new one. So we're going to drag that out from here. And this this uh, float here will be again another random value for now. This won't always be random because we're going to add a load of conditions into it later on. But for now, we just want it to do random, like so. Compile. Okay, so that will do that and hit save. So now only one of them should attack me after four seconds. There you go. And you see now they sort of take it in turns almost. Okay, so a bit janky, but we're getting there, okay? Um, and that will do it for this episode. In the next episode, we'll tell these debug menus to actually be more useful and change their value as they are updated. And we'll also work, start working on different conditions that are required for determining whether or not they should attack you. One of those will be making sure that they don't attack you from behind. They're always going to be in front of you when they attack. And other options may also be things like aggression and times since the last attacked. So if you want to watch the next episode right now, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Daily, where you can watch that episode plus many, many others. Big thank you to all my patrons and their patience for me in getting this series complete. I know it's been a long wait for a lot of you, but it is coming, I, I swear. Thank you everyone for watching. If you're watching this and you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you have subscribed. You don't want to miss out on any of the future content. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.